Hey everybody, good morning. So this is your phonics slash junior achievement show for Tuesday, May 11th. So we're gonna do two lessons today. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started because they're both about 20 minutes long. Um, so make sure that you have your phonics journal out and ready so that we can do our questions at the end of the lesson. So our first one is unit two. And we're gonna go ahead and Hi, and welcome to the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program. I'm Dr. Jenkins, and I'm here with a very special guest, Ivy Johnson. She works at a special store called Blue City Thrift. So as always, I wanna start with a little bit about myself. So here are two photos. The first one is a picture of a store that my students put together. It was a music store. We made all of the instruments and we sold them in a play store at our school. And the next picture is a picture with me and my best friend. We have been friends since I was eight years old, so that's a long time. Now let's look at some photos that our friend has brought with her today. Can you tell us about these? Hi, yes, yeah, so my name is Ivy Johnson, and the first picture is a photo of my husband and me in the middle of a beautiful sunflower field. The second picture is my two kitties, my little fur babies. The black and white one's named Lucy, and the white one is named Bunny. And then a hobby that I like is gardening, so that's a picture of a butterfly on one of the flowers in my garden. Very beautiful. I love that picture of you and the sunflowers. Thanks for sharing those with us today. So Ivy, here at the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program, we like to focus on breathing as we get ready and centered for our lesson. So we do three deep breaths. Have you ever done that before? I haven't, but I'd like to try. Well, we'd love to have you try it today. So I'm gonna demonstrate for you how that works. So the first breath, we're gonna go inhale through our nose and exhale. Now, I like to close my eyes, but you may want to keep your eyes open, but why don't we try it together? We're gonna to do three of these. First one, inhale through our nose, and exhale. Number two, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Do you feel more relaxed? I do. Yes, it works as we get ready for our lesson. So we like to use affirmations here at the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program because it really helps us to talk to ourselves and offer ourselves encouragement. So our affirmation for today is, you have the power to create change. Do you wanna say that with me? Thank you, yes. You, you have, have the power, power to create change. change. Hey friends, why don't you say it with us? Let's do it together. You, you have, have the, the power, power to, to create, create change. change. And that means that you are powerful if you can create change, right? All right, so once we talk about our affirmation, we move into our lesson. And our lesson today is money for needs and wants. Today, you'll begin to describe the difference between needs and wants. Now, a need is something that you must have, shelter, food, lodging, and a want is something that you really don't have to have, but you'd like to have it. You will also explain that families must earn money for the things they need and want. And that's what we do every day. We earn money for things that we need and want. So we have words of the day here at the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program. And these are our words for the day. The first one is money, something used to pay for the things we need and want. We need money to buy ice cream or money to pay for food. Want. Something families would like to have. What is a want that you have? Right now, I think I want to take a trip. Ooh, that would be fun. I think, <laughs> I, I, think I want a Starbucks coffee. <laughs> and a need. Something families must have to live. So a need. And that's something like rent or if you're going to have to pay for um, a car note or something like that. So that's what a need is. So let's talk about it. We've just had our words of the day, so now let's talk about it a little bit. How are neighbors important to neighborhoods? Do you live in a neighborhood? We do, yes. I live in the city. Do you live in the city or the suburbs? We live in the city. Yes. So my neighbors are important because sometimes my neighbor actually has borrowed a cup of sugar from me. <laughs> she walks over, she's baking a cake, and she oftentimes will bring me back a loaf of um, her banana nut bread. What about you? Do you have any neighbors like that? No. No. That's okay. 
some neighbors you don't know, right? In your neighborhood. Right. Exactly. Yes. So Ivy, why are businesses important to neighborhoods? I know you have a business, a thrift store business. Why is that important to your neighborhood? Well, I think that our little business is able to provide jobs for our community. It's able to provide things for our shoppers that they're not able to get all the time at big box stores. Um, so there, there are several things that little businesses can do for a community. And also they can buy things at a discounted price. Which Very is true. really good. Yes. Exactly. So why do families need food, shelter, and clothing? A lot of times people need food and clothing and shelter because those are the necessities. Those are the things that we need to be safe and to be protected in our world. So let's talk about a little story that's going to really connect to Ivy's business. It's called Those Shoes, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So this is our story for today. It's called Those Shoes. The author, the person who writes the words, is called Mary Beth Bolts. And the illustrator is Noah Jones. I bet you can tell what the story is about. Shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom, seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan Jacoby and... Terrence each get a pair. Then one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs, and so do Terrence, Brandon T., and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes, but when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes, and my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. It might be enough, you never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there is a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50, those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, 
I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. At home a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say, and Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear Mr. Alfrey's to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. We leap off the swing. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over, too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door and I push the doorbell and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at Mr. Alfrey. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, Thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. The end. So, what did you think of our story of our friend who gave his, his two small shoes to his other friend? It was very sweet. I think that's something that we all could do a little bit more often. Exactly. So you found those shoes at a thrift store, and you work at a thrift store. Yeah. So tell me how you got into thrifting. Well, kind of like in our story, how Grandma took the little boy to go thrifting in the rerun store. My mom actually got me into thrifting when I was little. She would give me a little bit of money, just a little budget, and she'd say, okay, here you go. You have to make you have to make it work. You have to get your own clothes now. And I would go to the thrift store, and I'd pick up things that I liked for wow. a fraction of the price. Exactly. So how did you end up at Blue City Thrift? I lived down the street. I was in there all the time. Um, and the manager at the time, he saw that I was in there two, three times a week, always looking for new items to take back to my closet. And he asked me one day if I wanted a job, and I've been there ever since, almost five years now. Wow, wow. So when you go to the thrift store, what are you going to find? Oh, goodness. There's so many things to find. Uh, there's clothes, there's shoes, there's jewelry, there's books, there's furniture, especially when you get older, that's something that you want to <laughs> put in your house, better furniture. Um, there's pillows, there's all kinds of stuff in a thrift store. 
Well, you brought some pictures of things that are found in the thrift store, and I think there are some pretty neat finds. What is this first picture of? Just tell me about it. That, my friends, is an alligator mug. <laughs> so what I'm holding on this side is actually his tail. I don't know if you can see that in the photo. And then I guess his head is coming out on the other side. Isn't mm -hmm. that fun? It is very fun. So some of the other things you can find are clothing in, in a thrift store. Mm -hmm. You exactly. Sure and you can find baubles. Yes, lots like of jewelry. jewelry, pins, earrings, necklaces, anything, really. Right, mm -hmm. right. So you can get fancy things at thrift stores, too, right? And you can also get things to wear on your body, like a hat mm -hmm. or a, carry a nice fancy purse. Yes, right now, with it being, I guess, winter time, we've got scarves out and winter hats and coats and gloves, all kinds of stuff now. Wow. So there's so many fun things that you can buy in a thrift store, and I see that you brought some things from your store. Can you share them with us? I did bring some fun things. Well, they were fun to me anyway. So while I was shopping before I came in here, I found this sequin ice cream pillow. I think those are really in these days, at least with my youth group kids. Wow. This is something very good. cool. Okay. Um, I also have some things for pets. Some people don't know that you can also find things for your animals at the thrift store. I don't know if you guys have cats or dogs at home. I have two kitties, as you guys saw in the photo. Then I also have this, which I'm not really sure what animal it's from, <laughs> but it has sharp teeth. And even on the back side, it's got layers of teeth. You guys might be learning about types of animals in your classes or in the books that you guys are studying. That what a have. great opportunity to study and research to find out what kind of teeth these are. Wonderful. They're sharp teeth, that's for sure. <laughs> Be careful, Miss Ivy. So I see there's a bobble in the front. You have some a bobble. Oh, I yes. Do. I have, anybody like pandas? I have panda earrings. I thought those might be fun to bring in. So these are all things that you can find in the thrift store. Mm -hmm, Very sure. nice. And what's this last game that you have here or project? This is really fun. So, and we don't always get things that are brand new in our store, but this was one of the things that we did and I was pretty excited about it. So it's called the Ant Universe. It says, watch ants create 3D tunnels in a space age environment. So in older classrooms, I guess it would have been sand. You would have seen the ants moving the sand. So now it looks like it's gel. It's very, modern now. So. Very cool. That's exciting. Very good. So as we're thinking about other things that we can buy in the store, can you share with me some of those items? I think you have some more on the side here. I do. So like we were just reading, I have a couple of books. You guys may be familiar with things like this. This is a mud pie for mother. Oh, a bug book. I bought a bug book because who doesn't like bugs? You guys saw my picture of the butterfly in the mm -hmm. first slide and then big book of why I thought that might be an educational book that we could look at too well the nice thing about going to the thrift store is that you can get more books for your money than you can get more books for your money when you're spending your bucks but <laughs> that was a little joke you can spend more money you can get more for your money when you're spending things buying things at the thrift store yes. so you can also buy clothing mm -hmm. I brought a couple of clothes here Little suit vest for any little boy. And a coat for the cold weather that we're going to get. Yes, coming up here pretty soon. And these are all things that you can find at in a thrift store. store. Right. Now, we were talking about those shoes in the book. Did you bring a pair of shoes that could maybe be kind of cool? I did bring cheetah shoes. So definitely you can find a pair of really cool shoes at a thrift store. Thank you for bringing all of these items. So we've had so much fun seeing all the fun things that you can find at the thrift store. But we also had a great story where we talked about how a little friend made another friend feel good by giving him a pair of shoes that he found at a thrift store. So he kind of created change, didn't he? He changed that little boy's world. And we've talked about how you have the power to create change, but also how you can be the change. So why don't we think about how we can write in our journal to remember what we've learned today. And we've talked about how we can be positive and we can save money. What if we wrote about how I can make a difference? Because the little boy in the story made a difference in the life of his friend. So how does that sound for our journal entry? I think that's All a right. good one. So I will write that I, sorry, with a capital letter, can make a 
Now, difference is a tough word to spell. So use your inventive spelling if you want to. That just means spell it the way you can, difference. Now, I'm going to end this with an exclamation point because I think that's important to believe that you can make a difference. So as you go about thinking about how you can make a difference in the world, think about how you can just start with your own friendships, like this friend did in our story today. Thank you for being with us today, Ivy. We've enjoyed sharing all of the finds at the thrift store. We've also enjoyed listening to the story, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so that is the end of our first lesson for today. So what we're going to do in our phonics journal on page 65 today, first of all, you need to divide your page in half because we're doing two lessons today. So you're going to do the first lesson on the top and the second lesson on the bottom. But so the first thing that I want you to think about are what are some ways that you can make a difference in someone else's life? Maybe it's your cousin or a friend or a classmate when you get back into the, to the classroom at school. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe just cleaning up your room one day would help make a difference. If mom's having a really hard day, maybe cleaning your room would make her feel better or picking her some flowers or helping your dad pick up the branches out of the yard. I want you to come up with four ways that you can make a difference in someone else's life. And it does not have to be you buying something, okay? It could just be you helping, you doing something without being asked, all right? So that's what I want you to do for the first part of the page for today. So we are going to go ahead and watch the second lesson for today. We're on session three. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe. Hold on. Let me pause. Hi, and welcome to the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program. We are so glad you're with us today. I'm Dr. Jenkins, and I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Mrs. Olds. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Junior <laughs> Achievement's Virtual Learning Academy. So as always, I want to start with just sharing a little bit about myself. If you all will recall, uh, I'm a mom, but I also like to do fun, adventuresome things. So this first picture is of me at the Grand Canyon, and I was so nervous to walk out on that ledge, but the guide who took us encouraged me to do that, and so I told myself I was brave, and I did it. So that's something fun that I did on a vacation. And then I also like to paint. And my daughter and I will often go to painting parties. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of my paintings that I've done in the past. So Mrs. Olds, would you like to share with us a little bit about what you have done and what you like to do? Yes, I would love to. So um, one thing about me is I love to work out outside um, specifically. And so this year, in the midst of the pandemic, <laughs> we decided to do a virtual 5K, my husband and I. And so this is our first one together. And so that's the picture that you see with us holding up the shirts. Uh, my 10-year-old daughter actually took the picture for us. She wasn't a fan of working out outside, of going on a run, so she took the picture. Um, and then the other uh, photo is in my work with the YMCA. So this was in our annual campaign and it was really a pivotal moment um, in our campaign. We raise money every year to be able to provide families with a place, a safe place and healthy place to go, um, no matter what their income. And so the annual campaign helps with that. And the YMCA is a business or yes. an agency? It is an agency. So we are in communities here in Memphis and throughout the U.S. 
and we help families stay healthy, where they uh, provide a place where they can work out together, also educational resources for kids to be able to further their learning, uh, and just be an overall asset to the community. Awesome, great. Well, thank you for sharing that with yes. us. So here at the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program, we like to use deep breathing as we get ready to learn. Would you like to do that with us today? I would love to. Have you ever used deep breathing? A long time ago. Oh, so. well, let me show you how it's done. Okay. So we like to take deep breaths to get centered. And so what we like to do is we like to inhale through our nose and exhale through our mouth. And we're going to do three of those. You ready? Okay. I'm ready. All right. Inhale, everyone. Exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale out. That's number two, our last one. Inhale and exhale. Do you feel more relaxed? I do. I Thank know, you. I love deep breathing. It's a great way to get centered. The other thing we like to do is we like to use affirmations. Have you ever used affirmations? I have not. Ah, so an affirmation is a way that we speak to ourselves. We give ourselves encouragement. And so our affirmation for today is, no matter how hard it is, I can do it. Do you want to say it with me? I would love to. Yes. Let's go. No, no matter, matter how, how hard, hard it is, is I, I can, can do, do it. it. Do you want to say it with us? Let's do it. No, no matter, matter how, how hard it is, I can, can do it. it. See, when we say that enough to ourselves, we can believe it. So we believe that we can do anything here at Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program. We also like to talk about what we're going to do today. And so today we are going to talk about businesses around the neighborhood. And you're going to learn in a few minutes why Mrs. Olds is with us. Let me give you a hint. She has a business in her neighborhood. So today you will learn about goods, businesses provide to their communities, and you will also recognize the importance that businesses have in their neighborhoods. We have some vocabulary and words of the day, too. Our first word of the day is goods. Goods are things that can be bought or sold. Goods. Our next word of the day is businesses. Businesses are places that sell the things that we need or want, and we've talked about needs and wants before. And our last word of the day is entrepreneur. That's what Mrs. Olds is. She's an entrepreneur. Can you all say that word? That's a tough one. Entrepreneur. Good. An entrepreneur is a person who starts a business. And I bet you all can be entrepreneurs. So those are our words of the day. And we like to talk about those. And one of the ways we talk about them is we ask ourselves questions. So I'm going to ask you a question, Mrs. Olds. Do yes. you have any businesses in your neighborhood? Yes, we do. Uh, so we have a coffee shop in our neighborhood. Would that be the coffee shop that you own? It is. Ah, <laughs> we're going to learn about that later. Are there any other businesses in your neighborhood? Yes, so we have a nail shop. We have a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Also a smoothie place. Nice. I have a smoothie place in my neighborhood. Yeah, nice. Wow, we have <laughs> similar, similar businesses in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Also, we talked about what are some of the goods that you buy at these businesses. So at the nail shop, mm -hmm. you can get, a, that's a service, so you're going to get right. your nails done. But I know sometimes at nail shops, they sell things too. Yes. So you can also buy nail polish at a nail shop. Mm -hmm. Or a beauty supply store. We yes. have one of those in my neighborhood, and I can buy things for my hair there. Mm -hmm. Can you think of other things that you buy in businesses? Yes, so at the smoothie shop that's mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, you can buy nutritional smoothies to drink on your way to work or to school. <laughs> right. uh, but a number of things uh, health-wise are sold there. And then also at the restaurant, that's where you can go for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So you're able to buy your meals there. Right. Mm -hmm. And as we said, you're an entrepreneur. You're yes. a person that has a business in your neighborhood. So let's talk about that in a little bit, okay? Okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to read a story to you called The Little Taco Truck. And it's written by Tanya Valentine and George Martin. I can't wait to share this with you today. Remember, the person who writes the book is the author, and the person who draws the picture is the illustrator. Little Taco Truck. In a busy corner of the big city, new buildings began to rise. 
And each day, Little Taco Truck loved serving up tasty tacos to the hungry workers on Union Street. But one day when Little Taco Truck arrived, he was surprised to see another truck parked in his spot. Hola, Miss Fall, Fall, Little Taco Truck tried to sound out the words on the side of the truck. Falafel, she said, smiling. Are you lost, he asked. Oh, no, Miss Falafel said. I'm here to serve delicious falafel sandwiches. The smell of her fresh baked pita bread and crunchy chickpea fritters floated through the air. Have you ever had falafel? I have, it's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> yummy, yes. Little Taco Truck's engine rumbled. He knew he should share his secret, but what if people love falafel more than tacos, he worried. He secretly hoped Miss Falafel would find a street of her own on the next day. But the next day, Miss Falafel was parked in his space again, and she brought friends. There are more food trucks. Little Taco Truck crept down the street looking for a place to park. Uh-oh, he can't find a place to park his truck. Get your gumbo, whooped Jumbo Gumbo. Gumbo, Little Taco Truck shouted. Of course, Jumbo Gumbo said. Only a big truck like me can handle the big flavor of spicy Cajun seafood stew. Little Taco Truck's tires sagged. How will people even see a little truck like me next to all of these big trucks, he worried. You see, he's the smallest truck out of all of the trucks. If you need a place to park, Jumbo Gumbo shouted, look behind Annie. I wonder what Annie sells, let's see. Little Taco Truck inched up the street toward a brand new bright yellow truck. Are you Annie? Yes, Annie's Arepas, she said, sparkling in the sunlight. Everyone loves my warm cornbread sandwiches. Little Taco Truck sighed. What if no one notices me next to a shiny new truck like Annie? The next day, even more food trucks lined Union Street. Little Taco Truck tried to squeeze into the last tiny space. When, what do you think's gonna happen? Bump! Ouch, a big pink truck shouted. I'm sorry, Little Taco Truck said. The street is crowded with the falafel and gumbo. And now, hello, gelato, he read the side of the truck. Fantastico, hello, gelato said. No, not fantastic, Little Taco Truck cried. I wonder why he doesn't think that's a good idea. What do you think? Competition. Mm -hmm. More competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little Taco Truck swished his wipers to hide his tears as he drove away. On his way home, he hatched a plan. If I get to the city first, he thought, no one can take my parking spot. So, in the dark of night, Little Taco Truck returned to the quiet city parked in his favorite spot and fell sound asleep. So that was his plan to get there early. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it worked. In the bright light of the day, he was startled awake as the other trucks arrived. Wor working up his courage, little taco truck blinked his lights, puffed up his tires and said, this is my spot. <laughs> Look at how they're looking at him. Their eyes are all startled. I'm sorry we didn't make room for you yesterday, little taco truck said Miss Falafel. Me too, said Annie. We can all fit if we squeeze. I can move my tables onto the sidewalk. And I can move my signs out of the way, Jumbo Gumbo shouted. So they're all working together. That's nice. <laughs> Very nice. Hello, Gelato cheered. When he arrived, you found the perfect spot. I did, Little Taco Truck happily tooted his horn. It was right here all along.
And when oodles of noodles arrived the next day, they made room for her too. The end. Can you tell us a little bit about Mug and Coffee House? How did you decide you wanted to own a coffee house? Yes. So it started really as a young person. I loved coffee. Um, I would drink coffee when I was in college studying for exams, and the love for it just grew from there. And in my home community of Whitehaven, I noticed there was not a coffee shop, and I wanted a coffee shop in my neighborhood. Very nice. So how did you come up with the name Muggin? Yes, so it's actually a word that we often use here in the city of Memphis, but it's also a play on the word mug, which is what you hold your coffee in. And I brought my favorite mug today, which is one that my son made for me for Mother's Day one year. Nice. <laughs> so who works at your coffee shop? So we have people from the community that work in our coffee shop. My husband and I, which we are the owners, sometimes we're working in the coffee shop. So it really brings the community together. So what are some of the duties? I see these two young ladies. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. So the one on the left is our pastry chef. So she creates all of the pastries, all the nice treats that we have in the coffee shop. So we have things like banana bread and blueberry scones and chocolate brownies. Yes. And she makes those from scratch every day. Wow, yummy. So you just mentioned some things that are on your menu. Yes. So let's talk about your menu. Yes. So scones, that sounds very fancy. <laughs> so scones and blueberry muffins. Mm -hmm. But you also have some really fun drinks that you have on your menu. Can you tell yes. me about the Zippin' Pippin'? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so the Zippin' Pippin', uh, most of you may not remember, but was a ride in Liberty Land, which was an amusement park here in Memphis. And it was one of the oldest wooden roller coasters here. Memphis was actually kind of famous for having this roller coaster. And whose favorite roller coaster was it? The one and only Elvis Presley. Wow, very cool. And then you also have another drink, and that's called something about Bill. <laughs> what is that one called? So that one is a really fun drink. It is called Flicking on Bill. And so that is very reminiscent of my childhood when I was just learning to drive, when we could drive down Bill Street. And it was just an, a chance reminding us of a time where we could really have fun with our friends. So I love how you've connected your life to your business. Yes. And it really reflects who you are as a person. So your menu is full of coffee mm -hmm. and sweets and all different kinds of things. And we're going to make something that can be on your menu later, right? Yes. I can't wait. So here's a picture of some drinks. This one looks really yummy with marshmallows. Can you yes. tell me what that one is? Yes. So that one is called Give Me Some More. So it's a play on the word s'mores, which traditionally you make on a campfire. And so it consists of toasted marshmallows, chocolate, and then also graham crackers on top. Yummy. So those are the ingredients that you need to make that some more coffee. And what mm -hmm. about beside this drink? Those are some those are some of the pastries. Yes, yes. the goods that you sell in your store, right? Yes, yes Yummy. exactly. Very good. So some of the other things you sell in your store are these materials here. Can you tell me yes. about them? Yes. So these are some of our brand items. We have t-shirts and also mugs. And the reason that we sell those in the store is we want people to feel a part of the Mug and Coffee House culture, community. And then also that's marketing for us. As people buy t-shirts, they can wear those out with their friends and be a part of the mugging team. And we know what that's called. That's called advertising, right? Yes. yes. Advertising. You all know what that word means. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because that is the way that a business tells the neighborhood and their community about the goods that they sell and the services they offer. So we've talked about your community because you have people that work in your store who live in the community. But what are some of the other ways that your community benefits from Muggin Coffee House? Yes. So we are very active in the community, which means that we often give back to the community. We have started a scholarship fund for high schoolers. We are also uh, helping people get registered to vote and also encouraging people to vote. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're also employing people from the community. So people that live near the shop, within a few miles of the shop, are able to work there every day and earn a living. 
Wow. So you are a big part of your community. And that's important when you have a business to not only provide a service and a good, but also to serve your community. Yes. Wow. Thanks for sharing that with us today. So we've heard all about this fantastic coffee shop, and now we're going to make a mystery chocolate drink. I wonder what it's called. Hmm. Well, you're really close. It is made of chocolate, and it's going to be chocolate milk. Fancy yeah. chocolate milk. <laughs> Yummy. I can't wait to try it. How do you make this? All right. So we're going to start with a cup of milk. So we're going to have our measuring cup with that indicates that it is one cup. And today we're going to use almond milk. This is just my personal choice, but you could choose whatever type of milk you like. So we're going to start with one cup. You may want to get some help with this so you don't make a mess and ask permission always. And I have um, two cups here so I can share with a friend. So we're going to pour her a cup as well. <laughs> Thank you. All That's right. So good. And so now we've poured our milk in, we get to the fun part. And that's adding the chocolate. Yum. <laughs> now, so, if you want to make yeah. a pitcher for your family, you could get a big pitcher yes. like this and fill it with milk and use your spoon and stir that around too, right? <laughs> yes. Nice. That way you can share with a lot of friends and family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we want to do two squirts of chocolate. Now, I know you guys may want to do more, and it's okay, as long as you get a parent's permission. <laughs> So that's one, two. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Look at how the chocolate settles at the bottom because it's a little heavier than the milk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two spoons for two cups. And we're gonna let our friend begin to stir this. Can't wait. So we can do it together. So I don't wanna, I wanna take my time, right, and stir it yes. carefully. Look at how that's mixing. Nice. I'm holding my cup so I don't spill. Mm -hmm. Going back and forth. And oops, I splashed a little. That's okay. Yes. Looks good. All right. You see how our color changed? Yes. Getting darker and darker. So how do I know when to stop? So once all of the chocolate, uh, the chocolate layer is has disappeared from the bottom, you know that you are finished mixing. All right. Minus. Looks like we're done. Yes. So now for our toppings, we're going to start with some whipped cream. Mm. So we're going to give that a little shake. I'm going to put mine right here. Okay. And then we can go as high as we want because guess what? We have room in our cup. So let's fill it up. Yay. All right. That's enough. Perfect. <laughs> And now we can top that with some sprinkles, just for a little added fun. Now, I have rainbow sprinkles. I'm okay. going to try that. I'm going chocolate extreme, so I'm doing chocolate sprinkles. <laughs> so just shake, shake, shake. All right. Nice. And now you're ready to drink. You can drink the fun way and get a little bit of whipped cream on your lip as you drink, or you can do it with a straw. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. We have had so much fun today talking about the coffee house that is owned by Mrs. Olds. So we want to talk a little bit in our journal today about how we can remember something we learned today. We do that every time we have a lesson. We want to take away something. So when we were talking with Mrs. Olds, she talked about it being a dream to own her coffee house. And guess what? Her dream came true. So maybe that's what we can put in our journal today. We can write, dreams can come true. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Yes. So let's write that. Now remember, if you don't know how to spell the words, you can just use your inventive spelling. I'm going to start with an uppercase D. Dreams can come. I'm going to go to the next line to give myself some space. True. Now, I'm excited about that, so I'm going to make an exclamation point. I'm going to underline the word can because I believe that they can come true. So when you're thinking about what dream you have to own a business, I want you to believe that dreams can come true. We have enjoyed being with you today at the Junior Achievement Virtual Learning Program, and we hope that you'll see us again soon. Bye. 
Okay, so that was our second lesson for today. So in your journal, remember we are on page 65 still, you are going to answer the question, how do businesses help the community? And they talked about this, specifically Miss Olds talked about this and how her business, the coffee shop, helps the community. So I want you to think about how can some businesses that are in your community help your community out? And you're going to write a sentence or two to tell me how a business can help the community. So that is your work for today. So you're going to answer those two questions on page 65. And then you're going to upload your photo to the Google slide. And that's all that we've got for today. And tomorrow we will watch lessons four and five. And we will be done with unit one. It's going by quickly. Don't forget, Friday is virtual field day. Make sure that you are practicing the events that you are going to be participating in. The more you practice, the better your chances are of getting first, second, or third place. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.